What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize the game that I definitely can't read the title of on YouTube. Just a quick few notes before we begin. I'll be avoiding politics and things like that, but there are things that you need to be aware of. Denuvo was added quickly before its release, meaning that PC gaming is going to take a huge hit in performance, at least until it's hopefully removed at some stage later. And on top of this, this game is not optimized very well at all, and you'll need to lower your settings a ton, especially if you're running on older or mobile hardware. Then finally, there will be frame rate issues and stutters and things like that, which will hopefully improve as the game's release goes on. And that's not even to mention the crashes that lock up your whole system, texture pop in, and of course, the ongoing server issues. All of these will hopefully be fixed over time, so this is more of a hopeful optimization guide that should carry across to later in its release, and of course for now. Just a quick note, this video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your system. To begin, I'll leave everything on where it is, except I'll turn off VSync, turn off dynamic resolution scaling, and I'll make sure upscalers such as FSR, DLSS, TA, are all turned off just so we can get raw performance numbers of how the game performs. With everything else, I'll leave it where it is default for my 3080 Ti and we'll drop straight into the game. Just a quick note, I will only be going through the starting areas, so there's not going to be any spoilers at all really. Though also that being said, certain areas of this game are far more optimized than others, so you can expect performance differences between these starting areas and the actual game itself. But for the most part, performance should scale relatively here as well as it does in the normal gameplay too. All right, there we go. We've just finished the tutorial and we're in the main city of the game. Without giving you too many spoilers, we'll sort of just stand up here and do everything that we need to do. First of all, obviously without DLSS or anything, there's a ton of aliased edges and things like that. You'll notice stuttering and micro stutters pretty much all the time, no matter where you are. As you can see, just running around this small location here, the graph on the very top left, gets a ton of small little micro stutters here and there, and that's it. That's just how the game runs at this point. You're not really going to get anything better. As for performance, however, running at 2K on a 3080 Ti, with upscaling turned off and everything pushed up to high, we're getting a solid 75, which is actually not that bad. However, much lower end cards are going to struggle with this game a lot, especially close to launch. If we, however, enable ray tracing, you'll notice a huge hit in frames, which is pretty much just how ray tracing works. Well, these are restart, just so I can give you an example of what it looks like. Here's with that, and with ray tracing, a solid 57. Though, of course, it's definitely not feeling that solid. There's noticeable stutter, and it's not stable at all, jumping between 48 and the low 60s, maybe mid 50s. Ray tracing is obviously something you should never have on unless you have a 4090 kind of thing. It's going to kill your performance in any game, and this is no difference. As for how the game looks differently, it's kind of the same, to be honest. Lighting hasn't changed all that much, and it's definitely not worth the huge frame rate drop. Anyways, let's quickly disable that, restart the game, or actually don't restart the game. It's back up to 75. Okay, well, I needed to restart it to enable it, but now I don't need to restart it to disable it. I'll restart it anyway, just to keep it fair. Oh, and it seems that your frame rate cap in game is capped to the maximum of your monitor. In my case, for some reason, it's 75. It should be 165, so let's see if I can fix that. All right, there we go. Now things should be working properly, and the FPS cap should be a lot higher. And there we go, 144. Not quite 165, but it should give us much better numbers that are more accurate. So our frame rate with everything mostly uncapped, with everything set up to ultra as where it's supposed to be, was sitting at a solid 78-ish FPS. Sweet. So when you're going to be testing this game, make sure your display is absolutely maxed out in Windows, and that will become your frame rate cap in that target frame rate option. Let's mess around with some of the settings. First of all, options video. We'll start at the very top. Display mode should be full screen borderless for the best performance. But to be honest, there's not really too much of a difference between both of these options on most systems. Full screen is going to give you better performance, but that's not something we have here. Display selection, obviously, whichever display you're playing on. Resolution should match your display, and it should be no higher or no lower. VSync turned off unless you're getting screen tearing with the top and bottom half of your monitor don't match up. Target frame rate should match your screen's FPS limit. In my case, 144, it doesn't seem to go higher. Anti-aliasing and upscaling, you should most definitely have this set to DLSS or FSR. Having either of these chosen will give you a huge boost in performance. DLSS is NVIDIA specific, but FSR runs on pretty much all graphics cards. I have an NVIDIA GPU, so I can choose DLSS I'll set the quality to 
quality and this is what the game looks like and performs like. We're sitting at a solid 92-ish FPS. Changing this to FSR quantity, we're getting the same performance, although a little bit less blurry. Usually FSR has this impact on games, and to be honest, I just prefer FSR in most cases. As for the other options here, FXAA is just anti-aliasing and can make things look a little bit blurry. So for example, here's FXAA on high, and we've dropped to 78 FPS. If you're going to only be using anti-aliasing and not upscaling, choose TAA, which is probably the highest quality anti-aliasing in the game. This doesn't give you a performance increase, but it's going to be probably the best anti-aliasing you can choose in most cases. Finally, you've got DLAA, which is actually just anti-aliasing using NVIDIA's DLSS AI, and it's not actually upscaling at all. So my performance is 73. Choosing DLSS instead on quality, we should see it looks very similar. And now AI is actually being used to upscale the image rather than just smooth out jagged edges. So either way, it'll probably be FSR or DLSS you choose him, then anti-aliasing slash upscaling quality should be set relative to what performance you are aiming for. You can leave it on auto, but it's much better to choose a preset such as one of these here, usually quality or balanced on medium to higher end systems, and things should stay quite stable and look pretty good. If you have it set to auto as well as dynamic resolution scaling, it's going to adjust your game as you play, meaning that some scenes will seem a bit blurrier, and whenever things start dropping in performance, it's going to look a lot worse worst just to keep up FPS wise. However, to keep everything fair in this FPS test, I'll leave all upscaling turned off, but you'll definitely want to have this enabled. Having it off means that we can see the actual impact of each of our options as we play around with them. So starting from 77 FPS, the quantity preset is obviously going to have the hugest, biggest impact as it changes every option below this point. So 77 on high, we're at 87 on medium and 92 on low. There's not a huge amount of performance to be gained by messing around with these options, especially on higher resolution slash higher powered hardware. 10 to 15 FPS isn't a lot by any standard. However, there are a few options that should impact your performance more than others. Texture quality completely depends on the amount of VRAM your system has. If you have 4 or so gigs of VRAM in your graphics card, choose low, 6, medium, and anything above 6, choose high. That way the highest quality textures are loaded and you don't really take a performance hit at all. It just depends on how much free RAM you have. Choose an option that's too low, you don't gain FPS. Choose an option that's too high, and textures will be swamped in and out of memory pretty much all the time, leading to huge FPS drops. So from 92, 94, the next smallest option will be level of detail. This loads better quality meshes when you're closer to different objects. In most scenes, it won't have too much of an impact on how the game performs, but it'll keep better looking objects closer to you and hopefully push the pop in between low quality and high quality versions of models and people and things like that to a further away distance. If you have more VRAM available in your system, this is an option you should have turned all the way up to high for a much better looking game. Then things that actually impact your performance, shadow quality, pushing us from low to high, you should see a big improvement in how shadows look, but a relatively big drop in performance, especially if you're on lower end hardware. For the most part, having this on medium is probably as high as you'll want to go. There's no real need for anything higher. Low may get rid of too many shadows. Then volumetric fog, pushing this to high, we drop to around 79-ish FPS and back down to low 87-ish. So there's about a 10 FPS difference and to be honest, I don't think that volumetric fog quality is something that you should really worry about as it comes with a huge performance cost. I'd leave this set to low and pretty much no higher throughout most of my gameplay. If you like how fog looks and you're playing this for more of a cinematic reason, slash you've got performance to spare, that is an option you can raise. Ray tracing obviously you'll leave off unless you're playing for how the game looks as it is going to kill your FPS. FPS counter is a very useful option here if we enable it and turn off my fancy overlays. You should see in the top right an FPS counter, but I've got Steam in the top left with the Steam overlay, and I can enable a third party overlay such as River Tuner that gives me far more details and even a graph that can show frame stutters, drops, etc. Then at the very bottom, brightness and HDR shouldn't have too much of an impact on performance, if any, 
and field of view. This is something that can technically affect your FPS. If I crank it up to 110, you should see a change in performance. But to be honest, these options at the bottom really depend on how you want to play the game and what you want to get out of it. If you prefer a higher field of view or a brighter screen, etc., you should set these options to suit your needs rather than worrying about the FPS impact. If you're someone who struggles with motion sickness and things like that, camera shake are definitely lower, as well as motion blur too, as these are two major options that could cause motion sickness in some people. Bloom is just how objects shine in the light, and it's not going to have too much of a performance impact, but if you don't like how it looks, you can turn it off. Lens flare, if you look at a bright light source, you'll see lines and streaks head across your screen. There's not too much happening here. Oh no, there you go. You can see it around the corner of my screen. If I turn this option off, those will vanish, and well, it's not going to have too much of a performance impact throughout most normal gameplay. It's more of just a personal taste thing. The same goes for chromatic aberration. That's that red and blue split around the edges of objects. And finally, film green, which won't really have too much of an impact on how the game plays, but it will have an impact on how the game feels. Having it enabled can make the game look a little bit better, especially when using upscaling, as it hides some blurry artifacts and things like that. But the only thing it'll really impact is encoded performance when you're recording recording or live streaming with more things happening on your screen at once, there'll be more work put in by your encoder to result in a higher quality image, usually at higher bandwidth cost. Anyways, there's not too much in terms of customization in these options here, but it is an Unreal Engine game, meaning we can probably customize things quite granularly in engine configuration files, but I'm not going to be covering that in this video here, especially seeming though it's so close to the release of the game. This is definitely something that'll evolve over time and probably unfold on Reddit. For these other tabs here, there's not really too much else. On the audio tab, you might want to change your dynamic range to better suit what you like. The lower the dynamic range, the less of a difference between loud and soft sounds. So high, explosions will be loud and whispers quiet. Streamer mode, you can turn on if you're streaming and you definitely should as it turns off copyrighted music, which is definitely something you'll want to have set to on if you're recording or streaming. Text to speech is here as an option. It was on by default when I started the game and it sounds a little bit clunky, but anyways, beyond that, we've kind of covered everything here. The online tab doesn't have anything like an offline mode, obviously. And as for the rest of the game's glitches and things like that, they'll hopefully be polished out as time goes on. Oh, and now that we're done optimizing, you should definitely enable upscaling of some sort. I'll be using FSR quality much better. Anyways, that's really it for this quick optimization guide. Hopefully you found this useful. If you'd like to get more performance out of your system, make sure to check the description down below for optimization guides for Windows 10, 11, as well as Nvidia and anything else that you may find useful. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.